So we're here today with Jonathan, who is the owner and pilot of this lovely Toyota Supra A90. And Jonathan's just gonna run us through a, a few of the changes he's done on this car. It's a club sprint car. Uh, so he's just gonna talk a little bit about what's involved in that. Thank you for talking to us, Jonathan. Uh, and could we just start by just talking a little bit about the overall car? Uh, yeah, so it's a 2019 Toyota Supra. Um, bought it off the factory floor from Toyota and yeah, it's pretty much a standard car with a few bolt-ons. We've got some engine mods, some suspension mods, and obviously some aero mods. Um, nothing too special about it, but there's a few tips and tricks, a few few clever things that we've got going on. Yeah, so let's let's just start a little bit with the engine. Um, in terms of, of what you're running on the engine, my understanding is that this engine is still running largely stock internals, but maybe you can talk us through like the power output and what other changes you've got on the engine. Yep, so it's completely stock internals. We haven't opened the engine. It's got uh, an AMS turbo kit from, uh, from America and the AMS uh, charge cooled intake manifold. Uh, it's got, on low boost, it's got about 400 kilowatts at the hubs. On high boost, it's got about 500, but that's more than the gearbox can handle. So we've turned it down for this event. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty factory engine, stock engine with bolt-ons. In terms of the the suspension, uh, what are we what are we running here? What's different compared to factory? Uh, yep. So from the beginning, we knew that this was going to be an aero project. So suspension is done by DNA Autosport. They've done they started the car with SPL adjustable arms at all four corners, uh, just to make sure we can get the alignment and the adjustment, and we don't have to redo everything every time we um, make a step up. Uh, so it's got Bilstein Evo uh, coilovers off the shelf um, and the spring rates and all the damping settings are set up by DNA. Um, and we've got AFE sway bars front and rear, all standard aftermarket stuff. And I know that we've also got quite a, a special, well a neat little logging setup in this car. So can you tell us what's going yep. on there? Yep, so if you look down here. We've integrated a Motec uh, Motec display and it is logging shock pop data from all four corners of the vehicle and that's basically telling us what each what each wheel is doing how each damper is performing uh, how the arrow is working and all that stuff so we don't have to guess anything okay so let's get to the, the part that everyone wants to know about which is of course the arrow what are we running here um we're running an off-the-shelf kit uh, from kyle's new shop uh, no, just kidding. Uh, from, as I said, from the beginning we knew that this was going to be an aero project. We set about doing a full 3D scan of the car, try and figure out how we can approach it from a CFD perspective, and try and get a, a more bespoke package, a bespoke aero package for the car rather than just off the shelf stuff. So I guess I'll, I'll walk through a few of the aero features on the car. So yeah, basically at the front we're pushing the limits of what we can physically run in club sprint. Um, so we're, we're basically using the maximum rule box out here. So this allows us to use the maximum rule set out here. We have to follow the bumper of 50 mil offset in front through here. So we're using that to the maximum. We've got a, a few little bits of detailing on the front splitter. Uh, we've got obviously some side tunnels going on here, just trying to maximize extraction. Some little end plates at the front. Um, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on underneath the car that we're not really going to show right now because that would be a bit silly to give away. Uh, and then moving back we've got these side skirts here, just really trying to make sure we get good extraction out through the front and then control the flows of the rear of the car. And then going on to the rear, what we have is we've got an off-the-shelf wing up high uh, from, from DAS. And then down low, we've got, at the back, we've got this, this custom diffuser here where we really tried to maximize the volume available to us uh, to make sure we can get maximum extraction from the underfloor through there. Okay, well, thank you very much for showing us your car, Jonathan, and all the best of luck in Bob Sprint. Thank you very much, Carl. It's been a pleasure. Unfortunately, as I'm a bit rusty filming interviews, I missed a few very cool things on Jonathan's car that I wanted to discuss, so we'll go through them here. First up, the rear wing mounts for this car are super cool. They're a custom mounting solution designed by Jonathan himself using FEA optimization. This means that not only do they look cool, but they are also super light for how strong they are. Next up are the brakes. This car is one of the first in Australia to use the Brembo Pista braking kit supplied by Tilton Racing. 
I've been told that in combination with Race Technologies pads that they are the most powerful and well-engineered brake setup for this platform. When you look at the performance this car has under braking, I'm inclined to believe that. The car weighs one and a half tons and with the help of a good chunk of downforce, it's able to brake at the 90 meter mark for turn two, which is really very late, and the car's doing 220 k's an hour before you get on the brakes there. It's pulling over 1.7 G braking coming into some corners, and this is a car that's on A052s, which are a road tire, not a slick. Finally, I just wanted to mention that Sydney Composites did an exceptional job of putting together all the pieces of my AeroVision with some immense quality carbon work, even around some of my more complicated geometries. Also to DNA Autosport, who were great to work with and did a great job of getting the car into the aero window that I wanted it in. Overall, the car did immensely well. Competition was fierce in club sprint, with second to sixth separated by under a second prior to the shootout, and third to sixth separated by less than half a second. Unfortunately, Jonathan was just on the tail end of that train by 800s and just missed out on the shootout. Which is still a mega effort given that this is both the car's and Jonathan's first outing at World Time Attack Challenge. Overall, the car came away with 6th out of 38 in club sprint and was the fastest non-all-wheel drive car in club sprint by over a second and the fastest super at the event by 2.5 seconds. Anyway, let's sit back and enjoy some onboard of Jonathan's fastest lap.